uh, I'm not sure how to phrase it because uh, I know myself it's not really a concern, uh, but some a concern that other people have with the deep decent espresso machine is the longevity that it could uh, last or how long it can last. Um, sorry. Um, but basically, you look at a Linea Mini machine and you pay six thousand dollars for it, and inside it is all the same parts that a decent would have. You have a motherboard or a circuit board you have all the valves you have all the pumps and to me i don't think there's any reason to doubt that a decent machine would last any longer or shorter than a linea mini because it's all commercial parts the mm, circuit boards don't really fail is, is that a pretty accurate thought process um, like it yeah, things failing would, shouldn't really be a concern i would go the other way which is that when i hired everybody i hired was in, this, in the seattle area and everybody did a one-month internship at one of two repair shops in Seattle uh, before we even started on the machine to find out what failed. And uh, by far the biggest thing that destroys machines is calcification. And, and what we found was when the water heats is when it precipitates. And so boilers are kind of like the worst because they get cold water in, they heat it, and then the water's not moving and all the precipitation goes to the bottom. Uh, now they're made to be able to withstand a lot of calcium buildup. Um, but so that's the first thing. And our approach doesn't have that particular problem um, because water goes through, it will build up there, but then it's quite easy to send cleaning product through and decalcify that tube. Um, we, um, so there, there's that. Um, with a, an original, five years ago, we took a really radical approach, which is, when you turn the machine on, it would spend 10 minutes heating the water tank up, cycling the whole water, causing all the calcium to precipitate. And the return is about this far away from the uptake. So um, the calcium precipitated on the bottom of the water tank and you could just pour it out. Now that's still the case, right? When you use your D1, um, at, if you empty the water tank after two weeks, you'll find a thin coating of white powder. And that's the calcium precipitating out of that, except that in ours, you can throw it out. Um, so next with calcium, I'm gonna stick with calcium for a bit. Those traditional machines are largely metal tubed, welded uh, or soldered. And um, that's problematic in a whole lot of ways. One is calcium adheres to metal quite nicely. Um, they also have thermal cycling problems. The metal expands and contracts each time the machine heats or cools, which is why you hear all the time the advice that a traditional machine should never be turned off um, so that you don't have the heat cycling. So the way they achieve um, lack of water leaks is through welding. Um, we, as going through all these machines, found that Nestle and Nespresso had invented a new connector type that was slowly taking over the whole planet. Um, where, and it's this very clever thing where there's this loose, um, you got a tube with a little piece of metal around it um, and then an O-ring. And what happens is that when there's no pressure, it goes loose and slack. So, and then when pressure builds up, it immediately self seals. So what you don't have is a thermal cycling problem. As soon as the machine cools, it just lets go and it can move freely and twist. Um, so, uh, those we just haven't had a problem with. And even if we did, we made it so that, first of all, every tube in the machine is color coded. So you know which length and which one it is. But those tubes are available off Amazon. It's the, the uh, Nespresso standard. So if you were to have a tube fail for some reason or calcify, you just take it out and you can put a new one in. But you wouldn't even have to do that. It's solid Teflon. You just drop it in citric acid. It would dissolve it and you do that. You you'd clean it out. Um, so everything is clipped together with those clips and that was a huge R and D effort because a lot of standard stuff like pumps do not come with those little, those connectors. So we put adapters on everything. Um, the Nespresso machines are really long lived. They're quite good about that. So we really studied those. Um, and one of the failure points we saw with Nespresso machines was those connectors they used were plastic molded. And especially the plastic molded connector to a heater had a tendency to crack. So in the D1, you'll see that all those connectors, uh, we call them click connectors, they're all out of metal. So we don't use any plastic um, clip connectors to heaters or pumps or anything. 
Um, but to go back to PCBs, I have a GS3, or had a GS3 from La Marzocco, and it had a very famous failure mode, which is um, they had a PCB in a box up here, and because the top was open, moisture would get into the machine, come out, and then hit the top of the, the case, condense, the, it was angled, so water would slowly move this way, and it would end and drip into the PC board. Okay. And uh, this is still unfixed with the GS3. This is a famous failure mode for the GS3. Is that water drips into the PC board and fries it. And it's a really expensive repair. And they, of course, don't say it's a manufacturer defect, and, and even though it is, right? It's a bad design. Um, so I knew about this because I had a GS3. So on our machine, we explicitly um, you know, completely isolate the PCB area with a lid and everything. And uh, uh, PCBs don't like heat. And so these, these traditional machines, they're not heat isolating their PCBs, which is mental. Um, above 60 centigrade, PCBs start to degrade, they age much faster. Um, you have to buy military grade components if you want your PCBs to go over 60 centigrade. Otherwise, instead of having these 20 year lifespans, they're like three. Um, so I see that a lot. What we did with the Decent is all the PC boards are inside a metal case and there's positive air pressure, like, you know, like a COVID patient. Um, there's air being pumped into the PCB component, PCB area, um, in order to keep moisture out. Um, yeah. yeah, beyond that, we can formal coat our, our PC boards, which is also an optional thing, which is after we make them, we spray them with a waterproof coating um, to prevent water, but also dust buildup. Dust will cause arcing on our boards. I mean, I. I guess the, the, the very quick answer is because we're internet based, I, in other words, our marketing, everything's word of mouth. Everything has always been about, we need to make sure that people don't have the machines go badly, that they have no reason to badmouth us. So I've been really obsessive about chasing down every single way something could break and making sure it doesn't happen. Um, and it's also because if it does break, we've always paid to repair it. And that would just that would bankrupt us if we had a lot of failures out there. Um, so the machine has been incredibly reliable. There has been a few components that we're not happy with, like the pressure sensor. Um, I think I would say about two or three percent of our machines have had a failed pressure sensor, but that thing's a dollar, and it's off the shelf, um, and it's a three-minute repair. It's four bolts, and you take it out, put it back in, put the bolts back in. Uh, and because we did everything with PC boards, it has a standard connector. You just unplug it, take the bolts out, put it in, connect it back up, off you go. So it's extremely rare for us to have a machine come back to us for repairs. The vast majority are so straightforward to repair. You would just send you the part, you do it yourself. Um, when, I, when I've looked at the internals, it looks very user serviceable. You'd agree. Like if yeah. you have basic, basic mechanical skills, you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I guess to way, go, any, any case. True. Um, to go on to the scale part that you talked about and how scale is the main failure point. Um, if someone were to use reverse osmosis water, which I will be, and remineralizing it, I'm going to use third wave water because I'm lazy and don't want to measure it myself. There's there shouldn't be really any concern for like do you even need a back flush and descale if you don't actually have scale materials in your water? If you have no calcium, but if you're RO, you're going to mix back some of your house water back into it in order to remineralize it. Well, I'm, this is, it's just a straight, it takes the city water, filters it. It's pure, like the TDS is like five. And then I'm adding third wave water, which I know the espresso profile does not have any calcium in it. The standard one, they do have calcium, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, in Hong Kong, we have no calcium in the water and we'll go two years without decalcifying. On, on the machine that's making 30, 40 espressos a day for staff. Um, we, we just, we actually never decalcify them because they just never have a problem. But that, that's the case. I mean, cafes know this. If you use calcium free water, they don't have failures. Um, well, appreciate all the info about the PCBs and how you treat it. Cause that's, I have the uh, Crossland CC one right now, which mm -hmm. has a PCB. So people I've, I've, I've had it for three years and never had any issues. So um, that's, PCBs aren't really a concern for me. It's like, will your motherboard and your computer fry? I mean, maybe, but yeah, we've had lightning. Uh, I think three or four machines have died from lightning. 
Um, in order for a safety uh, reason, we have um, something called an MOV, which is a very high speed fuse built into the PC board. And that's after the fuse. And that's so that no matter what, you would never be hit by lightning. So if lightning came through, got through the fuse, it'll blow the board permanently rather than pass the lightning to the group head. Um, but, but you know, it might be that it's middle of the night, you get a lightning surge and you wish it had passed the lightning to the group head because you weren't around. But uh, at that point, it's a PC board to replace. I think it's $60 from us for that PC board. Um, I think I've done three of them. The, the tablet's the most common thing to, to die. And, you know, tablets die. I don't know how many of you have Apple or Android devices that die. Uh, two years is kind of my median life with most of them. So that's why I've got the tablet, you know, sitting here fully detached so that it, it, when the battery or, you know, it starts to swell or who knows what the tablet does, uh, you get a new tablet from us or off Amazon. So that, that, this is the most likely thing to die. Two questions on that. The new XL, the 1.4 version, I thought I read that the stand is permanently attached or how is, it, how is the stand attached, attached to it? It's, it's, it's attached with three screws. Okay. So it's, it's something you can detach and we'll, we give you a little Allen key for removing it. Okay. Because I know the XL is aimed at a cafe so people can't walk by and just walk Yeah, and, away. and the main reason is here, uh, if I tap here, I don't know if you can see, if, it, if I tap on the edge, yeah, it, it will move. Um, and a lot of people don't like that. If you tap on the center, it's fine. But the edges does move. And some people want it rock solid. I would say more people want it rock solid than want the ability to move it. Yeah. Um, and the, the tablet, so can you put any tablet if you install the software to it? And yeah. well, yeah. How, how does the, how, you have to pair it with via Bluetooth to the machine. Is that like you open it up and press a button or something? Yeah. Or, or is there a button on the back of it? No, no, it's you go settings here, app, and here it says connect Bluetooth, and mm -hmm. you hit search, and then you tap on it. Oh, and the machine will be broadcast. Machine, if the machine is not currently connected, it's announcing itself. Okay. Okay, that's and, cool. Um, yeah, it's less of an issue. Four years ago, uh, when we launched. Android 5.1 was the state of the art. There were a lot of Android 4 uh, tablets out there. And Android 4 until 4.2 just didn't work at all. So oh, that was one reason why I include the tablet is I didn't want all these Android 4 users to be so frustrated. Um, since then, we found Android 5 does work, but the Bluetooth is not as reliable as we'd like. Going to Android 8, it's now rock solid. But uh, yes, yeah, some people buy like a 2560 by 1600 resolution tablet. You can spend seven, eight hundred dollars on it. The app is native at that resolution. So I wondered why I saw those resolutions. I downloaded the desktop version to play around with it. I wondered why I saw that resolution yeah. in there. Okay. Cool. So all the source images are at 2560 by 1600, which is the highest Android resolution you can get nowadays.